you're getting used to this, aren't you? I'm telling you now, Rob, I feel like an expert. I, <laughs> I kind of came in. I came in a little bit earlier with a banner at the bottom, but I don't think yeah. I was far off. I'm looking to you. I'm, I'm going with rum. Am I going with rum? Yeah. I'm hoping, that's, I'm hoping that's a lot of rum and a little bit of coke, not a lot of coke, a little bit of rum. It, it, it's Yeah, no, I've got a fair amount of rum in there, to be fair. Well, I'm, I'm going to partake with you. So, um, cheers. Cheers. Um, As we wave goodbye to the year 2021. Yeah, you know what? It ain't been a bad year, is it? I mean, it's, it's no, kind of... No. I have to say, it, it was it was shaping up to be a shitty end of year for me. I'm not going to lie to you. It had, that, it had that feeling back in November that this was going to be a shitty end of the year. But mm -hmm. um, for those of that follow the show and those that are watching <clears> and that have watched before, um, obviously, I, I took on the Lewisham Tavern on Wednesday, officially. Yeah. Um, I've been there... Uh, for the last three days, I'm there working tonight on New Year's Eve on my own. Mm. Um, but I, we haven't got a DJ, so I'm having to take the laptop with me. I've got HDMI <laughs> cable that plugs into the wall over there, which comes out of speakers, so I can play DJ. So um, there you go, man of many talents. Quite, not quite sure whether that's going to work or not, but we'll have to wait and see. But um, how's the holiday yeah. going anyway? I know you're. So yeah, funny. very. It's, uh, do you know what? The last two days, the weather here has been, you know, considering it's the last two days of the year 2021, the weather's been absolutely outstanding. And yeah, it's um, it's the sun's just setting now. And um, yeah, it's, 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 it's a really nice, quiet part of the world. I mean, I was talking to someone that earlier on today and uh, who who lives up this way but he moved he moved here from Southampton about a year ago and he turned around and said next week when sort of like the Christmas holidays are finished and you know the people that are here like you go home he said it's it, it's dead it's, it's just like he said you could go out and you'll probably see maybe two cars sort of like buzzing around and that'll be about it it's just sort of like you know it's just like a ghost town he said I was like oh okay fair enough <laughs> Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'm just going to bring up, the. Uh, it's not the first comment, but I'm going to bring it up anyway. Um, it's from Neil. Neil? Neil from Down Under. It's obviously New Year's Day out there already, as you can see there. There you go. 2.19 in the morning of New Year's Day in South That's Australia. It. And England are still crap at cricket. Listen, that ain't going to change anytime soon. I don't mean to be disrespectful. <laughs> um... The thing That's is, cool. I see. I, I I was having this conversation with a missus this morning, and it's like, it's not Australia's fault that we're that crap at cricket at the minute. Well, it is. Ah. It is. It is our fault. No, it's no, no. Fault. I said it's not Australia's no, no, fault. No, it is Australia's fault. Oh, because we sent everyone over there hundreds of years ago, and then they got good at what we told them to get good at. So. <laughs> But I, I don't know. I mean, sort of like I, I turned around to the missus and I said, you know, it's a bit like when we beat San Marino 10 0 in the football. It's like, how can you get any enjoyment out of that? That's not no, competition. Not. It's not. No, it's not. And I'll tell you what, speaking of your delightful. <clears throat> yeah. What's that <sighs> problem? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I don't think she started on the, on the, 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 the tough drinks yet. So. I don't know. That's what she's like now. What's she going to be like when she's on the tough drinks? Um, My life might a, be in. A new, a new follower, possibly, or a first-time commenter, because I, I don't recognise the name, Rob. Um, I've got to be honest, I don't. But... Six. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Uh, Sharky's in. No, wrong one. There's Sharky. Sharky's in. Happy Sharky. to see you as well, my friend. Uh, Absolutely. Chan. Ten games to go for who? Oh, ten more games, what? Um... Well, West Ham have got 18 in the league. No, I mean, is there 10 more games cancelled? Because I know we had quite a few oh. that, um, oh. went shot for shit, didn't it? Um, Sharky says, Happy New Year. Right back. Good health you. to you, sir. Uh, West Ham game against Norwich has been rearranged for the 12th of January. To that was the home game, wasn't it? That was the one that they cancelled for COVID, wasn't it? That was so the 12th of January, is that a midweek game? That I is, isn't it? it? That'd be on Wednesday. Mm. Ooh. And okay. Mark, afternoon, Squire, and a happy new, happy year, new year, sir. You. So, Rob, we're here to discuss um, tomorrow. Is it, yeah, mm. it's tomorrow. 
That's all right. It's Chelsea Liverpool. I was, I was, I've been working out what games are shown at the pub over the weekend, and um, for some reason, Chelsea Liverpool jumped out at me. Then that's that's on Sunday. That's on the second. So we're here to discuss tomorrow's game against Palace. Mm. What are your thoughts? Well, I think they've. They they look a half decent outfit under Patrick Vieira. I'm not going to lie. I think they're. Um, I think I think I've been quite impressed with them because I think they they were obviously under Roy Hodgson for a number of years and he had them playing a style of football that was, was Roy Hodgson sort of thing. It wasn't too dissimilar to how England played under his tenureship. So yeah. um, Patrick Vieira coming in. I mean, I got to be honest. I sort of sat there and thought, yeah. Well, he's never managed in the Premier League before. How's he going to cut it? You know, great player doesn't necessarily make a great manager. Um, having said that, I think he's come in. He's done an awful lot of business. There was there was um, quite a bit of surgery that I think it was fair to say that, that Crystal Palace needed to have. And he's brought in players like Anderson, Guehi, um, Edouard. And they, they've come in and they've, they've looked all right, to be fair. I mean, all right, their, their last game... You might turn around and say, well, yeah, it was against Norwich, but you can only pl- beat who's put in front of you, can't you? Um, they they sort of dispatched them 3-0. I, I think, especially at home, Selhurst Park, I think they're, they're going to be a tough nut to crack. I really do. Um, bear with me. My screen's decided to play Silly Sausages. and I don't Ooh. like it when it does this. I need to do that, and hopefully, no, it's it's kind of... It's it's acid. It's acid. Look, you can see it going on. I don't know what's happened to my screen. Anyway, no, you, you look fine. This end. No, not that screen. The bottom screen. This one. Look. Ah, that one's got oh, all dear. skidooey. Uh, just quickly, while I try and sort this out. So uh, yes, it's a Wednesday. Um, the the new game. I have to get the old train ticket sorted then. Tell you what, tell you what Sharky, from where I'm sitting, your your YouTube um, icon there it looks like a couple of the girls that I used to know. Um, uh, Kent, just getting over COVID, finished his isolation. Oh. Uh, he's missed three games of football. Back tomorrow for Palace. There's me and my dad. But I'll tell you what, oh, yeah, I had it a couple of weeks ago, mate, and it really isn't. Um, it really isn't fun to say the least. I um, yeah, I didn't, I didn't enjoy it at all. I've got to say, uh, you saw what Neil said there, um, Rob. That's for you. I don't do yeah, no, nah, it's that's fair enough, Neil. I mean, like I say, I thought I'd just get it in there because boring as shit. Like I say, cricket. Yeah, we we we're absolutely hopeless at no, cricket t- in listen, Australia. Test cricket is shit. You have someone run down, they go Hurr! with a ball, and then you have some other geezer a little bit away from him with a bat go click click. Click. That's all they do for like five days. Maybe they might hit a quick, like a decent one. We can't do it for five days, Duke. That's the problem. Speak for yourself. Anyway, stop it. John says, uh, I need to put him in time out. John says, evening all. Hello, buddy. Well, John. Titch, hope you're well, mate. Afternoon, gents. Not sure how long you've been on. Uh, about 30 oh, seconds. Uh, hit the bell. Seconds. Touch the bell. Rob's bell. Yeah. Um, Neil says, good to hear that you're on the men, Kent, and I hope your dad's feeling better too. That's uh, from all of us. Kent says, 2-1 to us tomorrow. Ben Rama before he goes off to AFCON. Mm. Well, he's scored in the um, last two, hasn't he? So he's on a little bit of a run. He says there's a bird in the photo. Yeah, it's, um, yeah, I won't, yeah, I'll leave it there. I'm not going in there. Um, there she is. There she is. Happy. Double the H. Only, the only Green King employee that I'm happy to see. I'm not well, <laughs> apart from your son, Rob. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> you know, and she's a darn sight easier on the eyes than your son. You know what I mean? So, well, um, to be to be fair, that's that's not really setting the bar very high, is it? Touche, touche. Uh, Ken, I nearly put Ken in timeout. Bloody hell, we're on the other side of the screen. Uh, to be honest, Duke, I got lucky. So did my daddy. If we hadn't tested, I would have just thought it was bad cold. That was the Omicron, buddy. That's the one I had. And it was, um, yeah, it's a, it was a lot of bad head cold, fuzzy and all the rest of it. Yeah, I agree with you. Uh, Tiz says he's got them all on. Oh, don't know. Don't know what that's all about. My favourite Canadian cyclone has turned up. The Peachmeister. 
he sent me several messages today that I've not had a chance to listen to because there's not <laughs> enough hours in the day for me I to know. listen to um, 17, probably, you know, three or four hour long messages. Love you, Peach. Good to see you. Um, happy load of laughing faces. Peach and Titch having a conversation. And then Happy says, not sure if that's a compliment or not. I, I think you know that it's a compliment. I did say hello to Jamie. I uh, told Jamie to say hello to you when he saw you next. Uh, Pete says 5 nil. He usually goes big or goes home, doesn't he? He, he, he never goes home. <laughs> he always goes big, no. Rob. So, I have here, Rob, your, yep. um, your thoughts on what Moyes will do. Not necessarily yep. your thoughts. Correct. Moyes's, these are Moyes's, um This is Yeah, my, my guess at what David Moyes is going to kick out tomorrow. Um, but, so, uh, I'll put that up in a second. I just want to... Happy. I am. I am. I'm just aching a lot from now working. Um, <laughs> Been sitting on his ass for the last month. <laughs> Seven weeks, Rob. Seven weeks. I worked seven it out weeks, today. really? Yeah. Jeez. I worked it out today because obviously I've been trying to get furniture and stuff backwards and forwards. I've not worked a lot. Yeah. Um, when I've done my management fee, um, I, I've, I've earned and paid the staff. I've earned about £3.19 so far. So I need a good weekend <laughs> when I'm going to be working. But that ain't too bad. So let's get, um, let's get the... <coughs> Your predicted Moyes lineup. Mm -hmm. Get rid uh, of that. You didn't even give me a chance. I was on it. I even had the buttons over here clicked and ready to go. Stop it, you. So go ahead. Tell me, tell me who and tell me why. Do you want to go full screen with it? Oh, listen, shall I do it? Uh, look, ready? Go on, go on. Sod the expense. There we go. Okay. Uh, to be honest, I don't think an awful lot of this requires too much explanation. Fabianski, he made two cracking saves right at the end against Watford. Um, he he retains his place. The back four retain their place. I mean, are you really going to bring back in Masuaku for Ben Johnson? Please, Mr. Yeah. Moyes, don't. Just don't. You know, even if Ben Johnson's injured, bring, you know, put put anyone there. You know, put, put Ashby there, for goodness sake. Put um, Kufel there, you know, whatever. I mean, you've got, yes, they're, they're right full-backs, but... So is Ben Johnson, and you know, he, but we can he, say he got... Fredericks. Fredericks has played out there, hasn't he? Yeah, he's yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, so, uh, you know, you know my thoughts on Masuaku, and as I say, I'm sure he's a lovely guy when you meet him. And if you was to play him uh, in Ben Rama's spot, then I'd, I'd actually not have a problem with that, but not a left back. Um, De Declan Rice will come in; he'll replace Mark Noble, in my opinion. And it has to be said that I thought Mark Noble had a very good game, and. It's one of those where did his inclusion allow Thomas Socek a bit more of the freedom to get forward? Obviously, he scored the equaliser. He also yes. was effective in. Yeah, yes. and, and there was. Because, again, is this the team that I would pick? No, it's not. Because do you know what I'd have done? I'd have actually kept Mark Noble in and I'd have had Socek and Rice either side of him. I'd have played a midfield three. Um, but this is what I think that David Moyes is going to do. So I think Declan Rice comes in and Thomas um, and uh, Mark Noble drops back out. I think Vlasic is going to play as the 10 um, in all likelihood, because I think he's he's got his goal. And as I say, I think he's actually performed quite admirably in the last few matches that I've seen him play, in all honesty. And I think he probably should get the nod. Um, ben Rama on the left before he goes to the AFCON. He scored in his last two. Bowen on the right. The guy's on absolute fire. And Mickey Antonio in the nine. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I've you know, I, th I do believe, I do believe if I scroll back slightly on um, Kent's um, prediction, I think he has mm -hmm. it there. 2-1 two, one, two, one to the Hammers. Um, ben Rama to score before he goes to AFCON. He also says uh, near the bottom, um, same team as Watford for Moyes. With Rice back, um, and and I'm kind of, I'm I'm kind of in agreement with with both of you there. Um, Titch does ask why did Johnson come off? I think he was absolutely knackered, but I think he was also, I think it was a precaution because he did start to limp a little bit, if I remember rightly. Mm. Now I'm looking at that team in front of me, Rob, and I. I 
I am concerned. Um, Moyes, uh, Moyes, he practically is Moyes. Kent says it there. Big Tom's going to be hamstrung by deck going forward tomorrow. And obviously, this is kind of what you've just... Um, it's, really, it's all fuzzy. Behave yourself, happy. What's the matter with you? Talk yourself out. Not even had a drink yet. We'll have one. And you're COVID, aren't you? So you're not even working today, so you can have a drink. I'm working tonight and I'm having a drink. It don't matter. Um, I'll tell you what, one, th one thing that really did um, place a measure of enjoyment in my body, mm. um, that sounded as wrong as most things can probably get. But Yeah, do you want to cut that out? We'll edit it out, can't we? Oh, no, we're live. No, no, no. <laughs> I, I like the enjoyment in my body. Um, was, was seeing Vlasic's celebration. Mm. You know, not not just. I, I tell you what, I, I did get pumped for the fact that he did the the jumping fist pump irons kind of routine, yeah. and it. I, I felt buzzing for him um, before I saw that. The fact that he'd scored, but then I saw that, and you can see that he's um, he's dedicated to what we're doing. He's dedicated to what the team are. Um, you know, you saw Bowen do that, I believe, after his first goal. Um, when he when he played at London Stadium, he, he gave it the, the the irons to the to the hammers, and it just shows yep. that you know they know what that means. Listen, these players know what that means when they do that shit, and they know that it really it gets us behind them. But you could see that Vlasic was over the moon to get mm. that duck off his back. You know, he, he pointed straight at Bowen. They had a celebration. The camera panned, and all of a sudden, fucking Fabianski's runs, you know, yes. 120 yards to join in the celebration. And you know what that reminded me of? That Go reminded on. me of, um, was it Diop's, was it Diop's header? Or was it, no, I think it was either Diop or Rob Bonner against Spuds in the cup, the Carabao cup a few years ago when Adrian. Oh, Bonner. Was it oh, the one at Wembley, wasn't it? At Wembley and Adrian yeah, led yeah. the length for the pitch to yeah. join in the celebrations. I love all of that. I love the fact that that shows you the um, the camaraderie within the team is that they will all join in, not the goalkeeper doing cartwheels like Joe Hart used to do in his, uh, in his penalty box and shit like that. This is a goalkeeper that's thinking, oh, bollocks to that, I want to be a part of that. Oh, well, I've got to get out there and join that, join in that. And it was mm. brilliant, you know, to see all the players come together. And then if, if you watch, I think um, after the penalty, a fan runs on the pitch from the other end of the pitch, I believe. It, well, he comes, mm. from, he comes from the midfield area of the pitch. And Thomas Suchek walks up to him. And literally, Suchek walks up to him and gives him um, a high five. He like double-handed high five. And then all of a sudden, the poor sods then like grabbed and grappled and, you know, dragged off the pitch. And I was just like, you know, do you, you, I remember Dick scoring against United. I was about eight rows back. Uh, yeah. You know, the Radatoyu Rad game and then the Dick's penalty. I was about yeah. eight rows back when Dick's nearly killed me with a rebound after it came back out the net and he slammed the ball again. And he literally ran to the crowd and fell into the crowd. And as he got up, some geezer grabbed hold of him from behind, spun him round and kissed him on his big yeah, bald head. I remember and that. Was, you know what? Listen, we I get we pay our money and, you know, there, we have to understand, Rob, that there are restrictions in, mm. in celebrating and you can't go over those white lines because that's, that's not your place to be. But if the players come to you right up against you, well, you you're gonna celebrate. You're gonna mock. Sure. I mean, Tevez into the crowd, you know, the, all yeah. of that. I love all of that. It shows the togetherness. It shows that at the end of the day, the players are like us. They're gonna celebrate. You know, they're they're, they're enjoying that as much. Damn as we right. Are. We um, we want to see them enjoy themselves. I mean, you know, we we want them to score. We want them to win. We want them to express themselves. And I hate it when sort of like they they 
feel like oh no i don't want to sort of be spontaneous and celebrate and stuff that you know we we want to be entertained we want to see you know players showing emotion i mean how many times have you seen interviews with a player and, and you feel like a lot of the the answers are just bog standard out of the box bollocks of they you know oh well, we're taking each day game as it comes and all that just Fucking say what's on your mind for Christ's sake! You know, don't coach. don't hold they back. I know, and that's what annoys me. It's the media department, and they have to because you know, not being funny. If that, if, if it was you or me that got up there and they went, "How'd you feel?" Fucking yeah! Like that's how you think. <laughs> isn't it? Let's not let's not dick around. I'm, you, I'd, I'd end up. Uh, I've never touched the stuff. I've never I've never done any kind of illicit sub, illegal substance. You know, my only drug is this shit in this bottle. But I'd be like Maradona in the World Cup. I'd be up and it's like that. So that'd be me celebrating up at a camera, you know? What are your thoughts then? What are your thoughts? You say that you want to see players celebrate. What are your thoughts on players that score for their new team against their old team? Celebrate. They're paying your wages. They're paying what? your wages. What's the okay. problem? Okay. So long as you don't take the blatant piss. And what, about and what about Tevez when he scored for City? in front of the West Ham fans, and he walked round the back of the net, didn't he? And he was like... And then he went off and he celebrated with the with the players as they mobbed him, but he kind of walked past the West Ham faithful, if you will, that had travelled up going, I, I'm sorry, this, I, Like I say, so long as it's... I don't have a problem with, with a... If it's a former player of another club that's moved to West Ham, scoring for West Ham, or whether it's the other way round, a former West Ham player that's gone to pastures new and scores against us. I mean, I remember Rio Ferdinand scoring for Leeds. And yeah, yeah, yeah. But he got, he got, he got a round of applause. It, you know, he didn't no, sort of like, great. you know, and we don't listen. I, I, I've got no problem. Like I say, you're and now. Nazi brother with his. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Answer. But listen, I, you're being wages. paid. Your wages fundamentally being paid by the people that go to watch you. Now, if you're West Ham fans or Leeds fans, Man United fans, whatever, um, celebrate. That's 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 what you're there to do. You're there to score goals. You're there to win games. You're there to get points for the team that you represent. And it doesn't matter whether it's West Ham or any other team. Celebrate it. You know, be spontaneous. If you want to sort of like do a, a celebration or, you know, that means something to you, then do it. What's the problem? Yeah, so long I, as it I, isn't I, taking the blatant piss. I mean, you I you know, so long as, as long as you're not being disrespectful. I think if, if you cross the line and become disrespectful, I mean, it, you know, a, a case in point, do you remember the time that Adebayor, when he went from Arsenal to Manchester City, he scored for Man City against good. Arsenal when he ran the distance of the pitch and yeah. basically sort of like went in front of the Arsenal fans and going basically a bunch of wankers. And that no, that's crossing the line. No, that's not. crossing I'll, the I'll, line. Listen, no, I don't see. I disagree with that. The okay. Only, the, for me, the only way that crossed the line, okay, is because it instigated something that resulted in um, a couple of Man City stewards um, getting injured. Other than that, the amount of shit that that guy got for leaving and going to City, if I was in his shoes, the amount of crap that he took on social media and everything else from Arsenal fans, you know what? I would have done exactly the same thing. I oh, am. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't know. I guess it depends. You know, every everything's different. I don't know the full set of circumstances, but I, I think that generally, so long as you're not disrespectful to the to the supporters who used to pay your wages, um, no, but, cele but celebrate think... by all means, but don't take the blatant piss. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> he does. He does. He's explained that though. I mean, he's a Tranmere Rovers fan, but he's explained that he's he's sort of like there was. I think there was a a, a couple of referees have done it where they've allowed an advantage to be played, and because they've allowed an, an advantage to be played, and the team has benefited from that advantage and scored the goal. They've not they've celebrated, but they've not celebrated the goal in and of itself. They've celebrated the fact that they their refereeing allowed that passage of play to take place. Yeah, they, they, essentially, they got it right. What's this from Kent? Lingard got hammered for celebrating earlier in the season, and he didn't <clears> celebrate. He got pushed to the ground. Uh, Ava still... Uh, oh? Don't know. Still got hammered. Celebrating goals uh, is the hardest thing to do in a... In yeah, a match. celebrate. Nowadays, That's what you're there to do. Nowadays, it's very difficult 
um, because obviously with VAR, you, you have a look at the, the, the Lingard situation. Yeah. The other, not, uh, uh, sorry, the Harry Kane situation the other day. You know, we are talking the final. Don't get me wrong. Is Harry Kane to so fuck him? Um, he was miles offside, but it, you know, in theory, he really wasn't. And it's but he celebrated, and then the next thing you know, you're having it chopped off. And we saw it with Suchek. Suchek had a goal ruled out for um, a foul by VAR from a header. Yeah, celebrated, disallowed. He scored again about eight minutes later. Similar sort of thing. Goal was allowed, and he kind of stood there waiting for VAR to try and you know hang for the goal out. And it's just you. It's, the VAR, in a sense, has taken that away. You know, you'll have that moment where it could be a 91st minute winner and you go off absolutely on one with the, with hmm. the players, the fans. You turn around and you've got your, your referee going. Yeah. But what's but what's the alternative? Get rid of VAR. That's not yes. going to happen. That's not going to happen. <laughs> oh, sorry. I thought it was just a general question. I do no, but it's, it's, it's not going to happen. I mean, it's, you know, it's like turning around and saying getting rid of the offside law. It's not going to happen. So uh, Pete says that Mike Dean is, is a closet man you support. Mm, he's well, a, allegedly, he's a closet something. But um, yeah, you, you you may very well say that, Peach. But I could not possibly comment. Luke, hope you're well, mate. Well, good health Luke. to you. Happy 2021 and happy 2022 beyond that as well. Well, did you know, Gacy, that 2022 sounds a lot like 2022? Fair enough. I don't, I don't like that thought. Do you, do you get what I mean? 2022 as in 2020 also. Yeah, yeah 2020 like again. That. No, mm, no. Mm, Mind mm, you, I mean, not. sort of 2021 wasn't sort of like tip top, was it? Let's be honest. That's true. It's not been the greatest, is it? No. Uh, Mark, Mark says, if, I, if only VAR had disallowed the LMI, I'll go. He'd look like a complete prick there, wouldn't he? <laughs> <laughs> you know, he goes running off. He's like, how about you, bunch of wank? Oh, fuck, it's been disallowed. <laughs> Gacy, I think you've done a balls up here. What's that? I might be wrong, but I think you've done a balls up here. It, it is entirely possible. It is I, entirely I, I, possible. I think it's going to be. I'm gonna Are you going to put up the Palace team now? I'm going to put up the Palace team now. What have I done? Um, what I, have I done? I have a feeling that there's a I am on there. holiday in my defence. I think there's a player there that might not be allowed to play tomorrow. Go on. Tell which me, one? Tell me, about, tell me about your Palace side. Which 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 player are you referring to? Uh, the number eleven. The the Palace Zaha can play. He was only one game bad. It was two yellows. Is it only a one game ban? Mm. What game did he miss? Who did they play? Uh, he missed the game against Norwich. Ah oh, bollocks! <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, mate. No, I ain't you. I, I just I. Mm, yeah, go on. Tell me about the team, and I'll tell you why I'm not happy. Well, uh, again, I don't think he's going to make too many changes from the previous game, which obviously he won three 0 against Norwich. Um, Guaita started that game in goal. I think he'll start this game. The back four, more or less, it will be the same, except for one change from the last game. I, I think that Anderson will drop out and Tompkins will come in. It, I looked at the last three games and what Vieira seems to have done in the last three games, he's ro rotated three centre-backs of Guehi, Tompkins and Anderson. So there was um, three games ago, it was Guehi and Tompkins. Then it was Tompkins and Anderson. The last game was Anderson and Guehi. So I've got a funny feeling that he might um, he might go back to Guehi and Tompkins Especially, you know, maybe looking at it and thinking, well, Tompkins playing against his old club, a little bit of, you know, Tompkins will want to sort of like step up the levels against us. Um, but yeah, Tyrick Mitchell and Joel Ward as, as the fullbacks. Midfield three, Cheku Kiate, I suspect, will be at the base of the three with Schlup and Hughes either side of him. Zaha will come back in um, and he'll play on the left of the front three. Jordan Ayew will play on the right. Odds on Edouard, I believe, will be through the middle. Um, and it will be Mateta who drops out. But, of course, the thing is, with, with all of these predictions, is that it all could be sort of blown out of the water if at the 11th hour we get told, oh, such and such has tested positive for COVID. So it's a little bit awkward at the minute to try and second-guess a lot of these teams. But if, if everyone's fit and available, I mean, and, and I'll just sort of wind back a little bit, 
people will probably say, well, what about Conor Gallagher? Well, the the rumour is that he's he's possibly going to be out because of COVID. That's that's what I've heard. It's not been confirmed that I've seen by the club, but he wasn't in the last match day squad at all. And he's been an exceptional player for them this season. So for him to have not been in the squad, something was amiss. So if, if Conor Gallagher is fit, then I suspect he will come in at the expense of probably Schlup or Kuyate. But... That's what I think that uh, Patrick Vieira will go for it through. And uh, if that is the case, Mr. Strips, what do you think? Yeah, no, I'm not happy. <laughs> Which bit you're not happy with, mate? So, anyway, Simon's Simon. coming to us. Simon, hello. Well, happy New Year to um, you, my friend. He says something's definitely possible. And then he also says that um, you will accept my apologies. In case you apologize. Listen, apologize. don't worry about that. doesn't matter. No, I love you. Ken says, uh, Mike Dean, Tramway Rovers celebration as far as green. Yes, I've seen that on, on YouTube. That was when he was in the crowd and he was chanting and shouting and singing and all the rest of it. Yeah, he's a he's a, he's a a Tramway Rovers fan. I, there's no doubt about that. But there's always that little thing of, does he have a second club in sort of like that's a little bit higher up the pyramid? Is he a Man United fan? Is he a Liverpool fan? Is he... You know, he likes Tottenham. Well, in all fairness. again, I, I couldn't comment. Uh, Happy says Leicester and Newcastle games are off. Have any of the, any others been cancelled? Sharky has replied saying not yet. Probably going to happen. Um, listen, I tell you what, Gacy. The reason I went out oh, bollocks when you when you mentioned Zaha as um, uh, who says it? Where is it? Where is it? I've lost it. Uh, someone said he pulls our pants down. He has a habit of pulling our pants down. Um, well, you say that, but I mean, I've, there's also been games that I've I've watched him were play against, against us, and he's been anonymous. So oh. he, there doesn't seem to be any in between with him against us. He's either he's either like, oh Christ, he he had a real influence in that game, or he did absolutely fuck all. Well, I tell you what, right? If you get at him, and Sanchez did exactly that against the Spuds. Sanchez mm. got at him. He got in his head. He wound him up. He gave him a little kick. He irritated him. All the rest of it. And listen, Sue Fowles more than capable of doing that. He did it against. Yeah. Uh, he did it against. Get him in his ear roll. So, mate, you're having an absolute shocker, aren't you? He, he listen. He'll give him little digs here, there, and everywhere. And it's just <laughs> Mike Dean isn't a fan of any other team. He's just a tool. Fair play, look. He's a fan of Mike Dean, I think. He's the only fan of Mike Dean. Um, Ken says he's not too sure about playing the two left footers in midfield, Casey. Um, hmm. Why not? I, I am concerned that there is a name on that team sheet. Two names on that team sheet. One I um, I, I, I miss greatly um, in a West Ham shirt. And I know we've, we've come a long way. But I, I personally think he's no disrespect to Dawson or to Diop. But I, I still think he's better than both of those two right now, and that's. Uh, but when we sold him, when we sold him, do you think that, given what we had at the time, that him no. moving on was right for his career, not for West Ham, but for his career? No, he's, he's gone backwards, Casey, and, and I still, I still listen. He's, he's at a team that are that have struggled regularly since he's left us. Um, and that's he's had a lot of those, injuries though, as well. And that's what I mean. But it's, it's through no fault of his own. Um, I, I I miss I miss Jimmy T. I do. I, I you know I, that's that's that might just be me. I think he's a great solid defender. You know he came out of our um, he came out of our academy. You know he's one of those boys in it. Do you know what I mean? So I do miss him. And the other one is um, Udithin or Uthu, whatever his fucking name is up front. Edward. Edward. Um, I, I I just have a feeling that this is going to come back and. Um, you know, place its uh, place its gnashes on our derriere slightly, because um, obviously we were linked with him several times um, yep. during the transfer window, and and obviously nothing. What came was it? Was it twelve million or something? something he went listen, there. Was it twelve listen, million? Something there were like? there were there were two or three. There were two or three that we were linked with throughout the summer. Um, Edouard being one of them, um, and. Um, Pats and Daka being the other one that obviously went to, to Leicester that we were both linked with. And let's be fair, they're not they're considering what's what's going on with Palace. Edward's not doing too badly, I don't feel. Mm. I think he's I think he's 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 performing admirably considering what the fuck's going on around him. 
And then yeah. um, you, you look at Dakar and, and Dakar hit the ground running. I'm not sure if there's been injuries or, or anything else there, but it, it seems to have just gone a bit quiet recently. Um, mm. and I'd, I'd like to point out just quickly for those of you watching, of those of you who um, listen to the things that I say, there's not a lot of you, but those of you who do listen. And I don't blame you for not listening, by the way. But um, we've been linked with Matthias Ginter, and um, wow, I'd like to point out you heard that here first as being yes, you did. I wanted there was and there was and there. may I point out Dennis Zakaria as well because I I've mean, never Dennis heard is, yeah either player mentioned in dispatches on any medium as far as I was concerned until the words came out of your mouth what a but month be, month and a half ago I'd be interested in uh, the, the, if I was if I yeah. was in charge of West Ham. Or if I was part of the scouting network, these would be people I'd be looking at. It wasn't yep. a case of we've been linked. They're players that I feel I feel that could do a job for us. And the next thing you know, um, you know, those two names have been mentioned in mental by relative in the nose. You know, um, the fact mm. that X has come out and said that that Gins is on our radar. Um, that that says a lot. You know, and then a few websites have said that Dennis Sicaria that we're interested in. Um, I, 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 I did say that people don't always listen. It's, it's fine. I get it. I don't <laughs> like it. No, I don't. Um, you know, and then uh, was it months ago I mentioned um, Adi Yemi, didn't I, from yep. um, from Salzburg. And, yep. and again, his name hadn't been linked with anyone at the time that I put this out there. That I thought he was a great player. We should be watching this. And then I think it was about three weeks later, Barca were interested in, and then yeah. about three or four weeks ago, it was uh, Liverpool that were, um, you know, sticking their head above the uh, parapet. Listen, I'm not an in the know. I I just know my football, and I know players that from, especially from Bundesliga, that would would pretty much do a job for us. I, I do love my my German and my um, my Austrian Bundesliga football. Um, and there's and a game on the Bundesliga tomorrow on Sky, isn't it? Isn't it? But, um, Munich versus Munchen Gladbach, I believe. It is, and Munchen Gladbach. Yeah, I might have some of that. Is a certain Mister um, Mister Ginter mm. playing for them? Um, I am going to have to leave in a bit. I've got. We're going to have to rush through this. I just realise what the time is. I'm going to have to text Chloe actually and ask her to stay. <laughs> Give me an extra half hour. Um, so let's quickly skip on anyway. Sorry, because we have Abbott digressing. Uh, Happy says that Zaha has an awful attitude. Mm -hmm. She's right. What's the first nugget, Mr. Gates? Oh, it's not a nugget. It's a no, no. Uh, Dubry, Dubry. It's our head-to-head -head record. We've got the better end of it. But it, do you know what? When you look at that, we've not played each other. When you consider no. how long our clubs have been going, I mean, we've gone, what, 126 years now. And what, what what's that? Sort of like about 60, 70 matches? Yeah, it's it's it, grand scale. Say it's it's 60, 60, 63. 63, There you go. So do you like that maths? It's quite not not that many when you stop and think about it. Not in the grand scheme in of things. All competitions. No, no it's, but it's we've got the better end of it. But um, go on and take your oh, next no, one's our last yeah. ten. It's only two next one's our last yeah. ten. Which was that one, two. Three wins out of the last ten, with a two two defeats and the rest of draws. So Five, mm. again, doesn't make. Um, outstanding. Still remember two thousand and four though, Duke. That was awful. We didn't what, turn up why? that day. Why would you do that? Why, why do, I'm, I'm upset now. I know. I know. I've made. I I made the journey there and back. Well, that yeah, was awful. I, that ain't much fun. Um, I can't imagine that that was uh, an easy. Uh, an easy thought. Yeah. Yes, uh, Luke, I agree with you. He's a very mobile player. He's, he's very... Um, uh, I'm not quite sure he'd make a good goalkeeper, if I'm honest with you. But um, I, I, I think, from what I've heard, he's a very mobile outfield player, hands-free. Um, yes. Clever sod. At least it weren't a rude one. I'll get I'll let you have that one. That's why I put it up on screen. Um, go on in, Gacy. Yep, so Crystal Palace have won just two of their last 13 Premier League games against us, drawing six and losing five. With these victories both coming in the 2019-20 campaign, that was under the tenureship of a certain Mr Pellegrini, I believe. Uh, I believe you're right, yeah. Um, uh, it's... <clears throat> that's, that's not a bad one, Gates, is it? That, mm -hmm. means we've won, that means we've won six. 
Yeah, that's half no, full. Leaves me one five. Sorry. Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, again, mean, these are all just historical nuggets, and they mean absolutely bugger all when they cross the white line tomorrow. But grand scheme of things, exactly. That's it, isn't it? Yeah. There you go. What have we got next? Oosh. So, West Ham have won four of their last seven away Premier League games against Crystal Palace, drawing two and losing one. We have scored in all seven of these visits, but have also conceded at least once in six of them. So, there'll be goals here, ladies and gentlemen, you would think. Yeah, um, listen, I'm not, I, 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 again, don't want this to sound disrespectful, Rob, but with the, with the two boys at centre-back, hmm. you know, you've got one that likes to switch off every now and again, and you've got one that... Um, Isn't the quickest? Yeah, doesn't have legs anymore. Um, yeah. It's the only way I can put it. You, you, you've got Zaha, you've got um, Edward, you know, you've got Ayu there. They're three guys that are, I wouldn't say blessed with an abundance of pace between the three of them, but the two of the three are definitely rapid and shit off a shovel fast. Um, and then you've got Edouard, who's just a big, strong fella. Um, and his movement off the ball is fantastic. So when you kind of combine that with, um, you know, a guy that switches off and loses his players when they move into position and another guy that just, you know, hasn't got the pace anymore, um, it, it doesn't... <laughs> It doesn't kind of make yeah. you too happy. Uh, Luke, Luke says it's going to be nil nil then, Gacy. <laughs> probably, yeah, He's probably. Happy says that she wants uh, Arthur Cabral. Mm. Do you now? Well, Easy. You don't tell Manuel. <laughs> so both teams have scored in each of their last nine Premier League meetings between Crystal Palace and West Ham. Only three fixtures have ever seen longer such runs in the competition. That being Fulham versus Manchester City with 15, Newcastle versus Wolves with 13, and Arsenal versus Chelsea with 11. The team scoring first has won none of these nine meetings between the Eagles and the Hammers, drawing five, losing four. Oof. Yeah. Do you reckon, um, yeah... 3-1. Anyway. 3-1. Okay. That's what, what you got here? Oh, someone's coming in. Oh, I'm guessing that's Logan. So, West Ham have won just one of their our last nine away London derbies in the Premier League. Drawing two, losing six. Though that victory did come at Crystal Palace last season, which was a 3-2 win for the mighty Hammers. Reasons to be cheerful, surely. Always. You, you can't not be cheerful. You've got to be cheerful. Definitely. Definitely. So, Crystal Palace have won just one of their 10 top flight matches played on New Year's Day, drawing five and losing four, last beating Notts County back in 1992. I've got a funny feeling that was Notts County managed by a certain Neil Warnock. Don't call him Colin. I wouldn't. His name's Neil, but I, I, I've, I've obviously missed something. You you have you don't know what his his name Neil Warnock is an anagram of. Do you want me to tell you? Please, Colin Wanker. <laughs> don't call him Colin. <laughs> He's a wanker as well. Um, and he actually yeah. turned around and said it, didn't he? Because he turned around and said, you know, when I die, I don't want no minutes of applause. I want them all to be saying Warnock is a wanker. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, fair enough, mate. <laughs> um, Luke says they look half decent. We need a what for performance, not Saints. 100%. Yeah. Says, says, how, many times will, how many times will Antonio hit the post this time? Too many. Oh. Too many. Um, yeah, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> you never knew that, seriously. I didn't know, seriously. I've never even heard oh, it. Oh, wow. <laughs> you're, you're, next time you see him, you're just going to be calling him Colin, aren't you? Every two seconds. Definitely. <laughs> so, West Ham won on New Year's Day in 2020, 4-0 versus Bournemouth, and 2021, 1-0 versus Everton. They've never won three consecutive league games on the 1st of January before. So, a little bit of history tomorrow will be made if we manage to get the three points. Well, listen, I, I don't doubt that. I think we're coming away. I, I honestly think we're coming away with three points. There's a few other people in the chat 
Luke says it's uh, as Luke said nil nil. Um, De- <laughs> Sharky says the late Desmond Ooh. is going for a two two. Um, yeah. Anyone else in the chat want to give us their um, their score predictions? Happy Hammerette, as uh, she's always wrong, she's going to uh, go for a three two to us. If you're always wrong, shouldn't you have gone three two the other way? A little bit of reverse psychology there, Happy. Indeed. And anyone right. else in the chat want to chuck your scores down? Mark says a uh, three-two uh, or three-two win. I'm guessing that's a three-two. I'm guessing that's Crystal Palace two, West Ham three. I'm, I'm guessing. I'm I hope not, so. I'm going to hold my breath on that though because <laughs> it is us. Um, there you go. Oh, it's him. Yeah, Udus Uderson. Ah, Crystal Palace forward Odson Edouard has mm. been involved in four goals in his last three Premier League games with one goal and three assists. One more than he had in his first 13 in the combination competition combined with three goals. Hmm. So he's getting, he's finding his feet at Premier League level. Yeah. Not good uh, news. He's, 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 uh, listen, he's, he's a good player and he will continue to get better. You know, once he, once he feels, uh, he, once he starts feeling his way around the Premier League, he's going to get better. Uh, mm. Jason says 2-0 uh, West Ham. Good, good lad, good. Jason. Happy says Gallagher scored both goals against us last time out. I hope the rumours are true. Um, yeah. Couldn't agree more. Hopefully nothing, Ken... hopefully nothing serious, but, you know, enough to keep him out tomorrow. That would be dead handy. Ken says, I don't think we played very well against Watford. I think Watford are a poor side and we need to improve massively against Palace. They're much better than Watford and Southampton. For me, I am in um, agreement with Kent. Yeah, I don't. I don't think really that the team. I think it was Bowen that played excellently and and dragged everybody along with him. And the fact that we had a a crap team, with all due respect to to Watford, but let's let's not kid ourselves that they're at the bottom end of the pay table for a reason. Yeah, it was uh, it was quite fortuitous for us I, in in some ways. Uh, yeah, just tomorrow, just tomorrow that will do. Yeah, mm. uh, happy. We grew in confidence massively against Watford. Yeah, again, yep. it's it's great. Don't get me wrong, but it's we we've um we we still have to improve. You know, listen, Palace are not going to roll over and die against us like um like Watford did. And I know what you're saying, Rob. Bowen grabbed us by the scruff of the neck and dragged us through a game that. We really didn't look like we were going to do a great deal in. Um, so I'm kind of hoping that, you know, we we, we, we have a, a better day of it tomorrow, for, mm. for want of a better word. Duke, yeah. a.k.a. the negative Nelly. Listen, Ooh. listen, Double H, not quite good enough to be Triple H. Double H, behave yourself. Jason says, is Johnson fit? We are hoping so. Fingers crossed. We'll find out, um, at, at, what is it, is it a 5.30 kickoff tomorrow, isn't it? So we'll find out around about 4.30, I guess. Yeah, about, about 20 past, our past four. We will, put it, put uh, it this way, if Johnson isn't fit, anyone but Masuaku, anyone Masuaku, I'd, I'd even sort of like see if I could get a game. Um, I reckon you might be able to, if, uh, you know. If, if, if Masuaku can right? play Premier League football, so can I. You didn't sing it, and please don't. <laughs> now here's a nice little one Declan Rice has played 149 Premier League games for West Ham and will become the 17th different player to reach 150 for the club in the competition at 22 years 352 days on the day of the game he'll be almost three years younger than the previous youngest player to reach the milestone for West Ham which was Mark Noble in 2013, 25 years at 267 days. Nice little bit of history there. And no disrespect to Mark Noble, but Declan Rice is um, <laughs> strides strides ahead of where he was at the, at the you know at the same age. No disrespect to Noble. Yeah, I, I think I think I'm right in saying I think that Mark Noble in that game against Watford notched up his 406th. Premier League appearance, I believe. Unbelievable. Crazy, love isn't it? Absolutely I'd love, love to say, see Declan get there, but mm, 
We'll have to wait and see. Depends on whether we can start winning. Abby Amaret says uh, the same thing. Cyber yep. calls her Triple H all the time. That's because he's a numpty and there's only two H's. So behave yourself. Or HKH, take your pick. I don't care. Behave yourself. Right. Well, who do I think will score tomorrow? I think we're going to win 3 1. And I think we're going to get a goal from <coughs> Benny. I think we're going to get a goal from Bowen. And I think we're going to get a goal from Antonio. That's what I mm. think. Go and see yourself. I'm going to go Benny, Bowen, Vlasic. 3 Ooh. 2 win. I tell you what, just in the time, we've been on 50 minutes. I was going with half hour on this one. It's madness. Um, we played well <laughs> against Spurs. Not sure what uh, Southampton. Well, yeah, not sure what Southampton was. And then, uh, so hopefully we're getting our mojo back. Yep, I think mm. you're right. Ambition Fingers over crossed, loyalty Jace. is the difference between um, Rice and Nobes. Um, yeah, I just don't think Nobes had the people running around him like Deck has. You know, he was never linked with a, with a Man City or, you know, no. that kind of... Uh, there's no, no yeah. disrespect to Nobes. I love Nobes to pieces, but he just wasn't. He wasn't there. Jason says, let's hope City beat Arsenal. I've got a feeling I see that coming, my friend. I really do. And Happy says, um, I think Benny uh, Lanzini ah, and uh, Dawson will score the goals. That noise there ah, is, um, you know, Happy's tongue hanging out and she's tripping over it every time someone mentions Manuel's name. She uh, is a bit of a fan, isn't she? She's She proper fangirls right out. Mm. Um, a farewell goal from Benny. Yeah. And uh, Happy says, I wouldn't believe, uh, I believe he wouldn't have left anyway. Yeah, I don't think he would have done. I think um, mm, you never know. I mean, if he was operating at the level that Declan is, possibly and he was getting teams with trophies. Yeah. offering him ridiculous money, teams that could offer him Champions League football, blah, blah, blah. I think he'd have been tested. Yeah, listen, I'm going to disagree with you. Love that bloke. Which one, Nobes or Lanzini? Let's leave it. There. I think I think she's I think she's talking Nobes, but someone get a mop. Um, <laughs> any more? Yeah, we got that one. There. Yeah, there. West Ham forward Mikel Antonio has been involved in 11 goals in his last 12 London derby appearances in the Premier League, scoring five and assisting six. So he he's in a little bit of form in these sort of match situations. Yeah, listen, he needs to turn it around. He's had an absolute barren, so I hope he continues the goal scoring. Uh, the, he started up again against uh, Southampton. Mm. Um, he, need, he needs to start banging them goals again. You know, we were talking about him being a, a, a runner for the golden boot at the end of the season, and then all of a sudden he went on a run where he's not scored. Um, you know, and he's, Yeah, he's, he might get the golden slipper. Yeah, he's, he's going to get a golden bloody spatula. He keeps on straight up over the top of the head. <laughs> Happy says Lanzini for lushness, Nobes for his manliness. I'll take well, I can't really word. argue with her, can I? Happy. I can't argue I'll with take Double H. Your word. <laughs> Absolutely. West Ham Saeed Ben Rama has been directly involved in eight goals in 19 Premier League games this season with five goals and three assists. One more than he managed in 30 appearances in the competition last season, which was seven which consisted of one goal and six assists. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, we're, we're only 11 games shy of that. And um, I'm not one to poo-poo on a parade and before anyone starts. I'm not... But you're going to. I'm not, I'm not bad-mouthing Ben Rama, but it's quite... <laughs> it's quite... Um, it, he could go on a run that, that, that Antonio's just gone on and for the mm. next eight games does absolutely Jack Diddley squat. And then all of a sudden we're now talking about eight goals in 27 appearances, you know, eight, eight goal involvements. And again, I'm going to be back to where I was last year. They're mm. not the stats of an attacking midfielder in the Premier League of a team that are vying... Uh, for, for European football, top six, top four every season. Mm. Don't get me wrong, eight goals in 19, that's that's a goal involvement every other game. It's not bad. But when you look at some of the others, you know, when you look at a Riyad Mahrez or a, a Raheem Sterling, I know that they are 
you know, uh, you know, heads and shoulders to a degree uh, above, say, Ben Rama, but their goal involvements are. And they're playing with better players. I mean, to be, to be fair, honest, I'm not disagreeing. I'm not disagreeing yeah. with you on that one, but I'm just saying I'd expect more from a <clears throat> uh, from a, an attacking midfielder slash you know one of the goal goal creator goal getter mm. than than you know eight goals eight goal involvements in thirty games that we got from him last season. There is an improvement this season. You see it in the stats that it's eight in, in nineteen. Hopefully mm. he can continue that and, and, and continues to prove a point. But if we do have a slip down in as yeah. in he has a slip down we're, we're going to be back to the conversation of is he good enough, you know, and, those, and the well, stats don't Listen, lie. I'm, I'm, I'm a Saeed Ben Rama fan, but I'm also realistic. Uh, what is he, 26 now? Yeah. And we're talking a player that the biggest club that he's played for in his career is West Ham United. So people do tend to sort of like paint him as the second coming of Diego Maradona. But at 26 years of age, if the biggest club you've played for in your career is West Ham United then you're not the second coming of Diego Maradona because had you been the second coming of Diego Maradona, you'd probably be at Barcelona or um, Real Madrid or something like that by the time you're 26. So like I say, he's, he is a fantastically skilled, gifted player. And I know what you say that the stats don't tend to paint him as being a 25 million pound player, but to be fair to him, he doesn't set the price tag. No, and and we've, we've had that, We've had this conversation before, mate, over price tags of players. It's not something that's you can't pin it on them. You know, um, mm. Rio Ferdinand at twenty was it twenty? No, eighteen million, wasn't it? Um, yeah. You know, all right. We well, Frank to, Lampard for ten or eleven, wasn't it? You Frank know, Cole for you know, yeah. 12. But I mean, I, I'm all I'm saying is, is that sort of like there, there appears to be a, a lot of people that will be in the camp of Ben Rama is God, for example. Um, there will be <laughs> other people okay. who will be in, in the camp of Ben Rama is dog shit. Um, I don't happen to believe either is true. I happen to believe that he's a, he's a very, very talented, very gifted footballer, but he's, he's not possibly as, like I say, he isn't the second coming of Diego Maradona. He isn't. No, it's it's a shame because you know a lot of people do um, believe he walks on water. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, let's go on because I need to get back to work. There's That's the, the Premier table. League table. Yeah, it's not bad. Not so, bad. Listen, if if we, are United playing tomorrow, I don't think they are because they played last night, didn't they? So I think. Um, yeah, they played tomorrow, last right? night. So. so we are pretty much, if we win tomorrow, <clears throat> we're, we're guaranteed ending the year in fifth place, I believe. Unless no. um, Tottenham go and spank. Well, we're guaranteed to end the year in fifth place. Yeah, that's what, what did I say? You, you said we, if, if we win, well, we're guaranteed to, to end because there's no more games before the year turns, is there? But Tottenham not playing tomorrow. Oh, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I hate you sometimes. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. We're back to the team. Let me get rid of that. Yeah, I don't like get rid of that. Anymore. He's knob. Um, Jason thinks um, uh, oh. Ben Rama. What are you done? Ben Rama uh, just tries too hard at times. Yeah, yeah. I'd agree with that. I have said this. And Happy says, I like Benny. But he is very lightweight. He gets pushed around. He gets bullied off. The I think both times. both comments are fair. I think Spot both on. comments are fair. I think he he does sometimes try to to do too much. I think he tries to sort of like do one step over too many, dribble past one player too many, um, you know, take a shot when there's a player that's quite clearly in a better yeah. position. Um, it's about decision making at the end of the day, and and the very elite players in the Premier League make the right decisions more often than the rest. And like I say, Ben Rama on a skill level is one of the best players that we've got, but is he at that level? Is he, if he was good enough to play at a Man City, if he was good enough to play at a Liverpool, if he was good enough to play at a Chelsea, if he was good enough to play at a Barcelona, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, then he'd be there by the age of 26. He wouldn't be playing for West Ham United. 
Yes, and we're bigger than all of them. Behave yourself. <laughs> um, I'm going to end it with Happy's comments. Frustration gets the better of Benny. Mm-hmm. Also, Antonio as well. Actually, I lied. I'm going to say Jason says. Cheers, Jason. Thank you. So that is our final show of uh, 2021. And considering mm. that we only started this YouTube malarkey, Mr. Rob, um, you know, eight months ago. Well, over eight months, nearly, nearly nine uh, months. That's like ago. 10, nearly, isn't it? 10 months, nearly, uh, nearly 11 February. months now. Yeah, it's, well, it's nearly 11 months now. It'll be 11 yeah. months on the 6th of January. So it's 11 months next week that mm-hmm. we've been going. We will we'll probably do a... Um, a uh, anniversary year anniversary show on 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 the sixth if we can work. Will we exchange out. gifts. Um, I, I will buy you. Are a we going to go out for a date? Well, we'll do it from a pub if it's quiet enough. It's normally quiet enough. So um, yeah, uh, listen, I'm I'm thankful to everyone that's been a part of of Forged since we started and and as we come into the end of this year. I know Rob, you are as well, aren't you? It's, it's been a it's been an absolute roller coaster. It's considering mm. we kind of started and, and it, you know, we kind of came into this with no expectations and we're coming out of the new year. Um, we're going into the new year with, with over 1100 subscribers to the channel. You know, you go back six weeks ago and I was wondering if we were going to make 1100 or make a thousand people. And here we are. It's, it's just madness, mate. Isn't it? mm. It's like, uh, and it's a good feeling that these, I mean, we've got 20 in the chat now, just sitting here listening to you and me talk bollocks for the most part of it. And, but it's, you know, it, it's been enjoyable. I've made, I've, I, we, sorry, we've made a lot of new friends over this, mm-hmm. you know, this channel. Um, you know, you've got Jake Cox over at West Ham and official, you've got Gio and Gonzo over at Hammers chat along with Charlie and, and, you know, Bex, you've got um, Jazz and Andy um, from the, their respective channels. You've got um, the boys over at um, uh, West Ham Fan TV, West Ham TV Network, you know, Russ and Stale and, and all the rest of them. There's so many that, I, you know, that I'm appreciative of because they've offered us help um, when, you know, when we've mm-hmm. come knocking. And then you guys in the chat, you know, at the end of the day, if it wasn't for you guys being in the chat or, or sitting at home, you know, listening to us. Um, speaking of which, there's one boy here. Look, here we go. Thank you very much, Rich. Good Richard, happy, happy New, New Year, year mate. Mark says Yourself we are the family. The poor man's, uh, poor man's saying I don't even <laughs> think we're that good. <laughs> Have you ever seen that outtake? You ever seen that no. outtake they had from Saint and Greavesy? I remember seeing it years ago, and it's sort of like they're just getting ready to do a recording. And Jimmy Greaves, God rest his soul, is is there sort of like he's doing whatever in the sort of like he's looking in the camera doing his hair and you know, he's making comments about, you know, he'd be glad when he finally goes bald and this, that and the other and all the rest of it. And he just sort of like, he's doing whatever he's, and he looks at himself and he just goes, oh, bollocks to it sort of thing. <laughs> uh, i tell you what, this was, I was talking to someone in, in Lewisham last night and we were talking about when the players used to go, uh, the drinking club, when it was Greasy and it was Bobby Moore and it was... Yep. Um, Brian Deere and all the rest of them and that they used to go out and he said they used to sit in sit in groups and round one the first round of drinks they'd talk about the referee and then the second round of drinks they'd talk about the game the third round of drinks it'll be about the fans and then the fourth round of drinks would be about training and it'd always be a different um, subject of conversation around um, each round of drinks which is just I, I think it's brilliant you, interesting you know, Again, it's one of the things you're not going to see anymore because at this time of year, um, yeah, you know, um, we've got um, Sharky saying Happy New Year, happy, can't believe that she's sending her, spending her new year in her kitchen. Um, you're a woman, Thank no, you, no, 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 no comments about women in kitchen, behave yourself. Um, what are you asking for a cup of tea? Well, I was gonna say it's when she belongs. Um, Happy says, it's been great getting to know you, Gatesy and Nelly. Love you too. Um, love the content this year. It's helped me through a crappy time. Mainly, listen, it's what we're all here for at the end of the day. It was part of the reason that me and Gatesy um, started the channel um, because, you know, um, I, I, I was I was in a rough place, um, you know, just over a year ago. And um, the boys over at Hammers Chat and, and the other channels that I've mentioned were were the same thing. They got me through a, a hell of a rough time. So 
um, to be able to give something back to, to others that I received and I got is, is all part and parcel of it. Happy, I'm sorry, I love you. Come on, don't be that person. Jason says the West Ham family are the best. You know what? Couldn't agree more. I think it's been fantastic. I've loved every second of it. Um, and speaking of the West Ham family, Mr. Gates mm -hmm. knows where I'm going. I yep. am now going, oh, I've lost it. There it is. All right, you do it, go on. <laughs> yeah, okay, guys. Um, this is obviously the end of 2021 going into 2022. We obviously had the news a few weeks back about Isla's situation taking something of a a turn for the worst. So the focus has now shifted to just trying to make her time with her family that she's got um, more enjoyable. Um, so look to that end, we would point you in the direction of the description below YouTube and Facebook where you can find the information that is on this banner. We, all we ask of you is that you copy and paste it and put it onto your social media platforms with a little note to your friends, your family, your followers and all the rest of it. Um, there's a little, little girl out there that is in a pretty dire situation and has been basically since the age of two. Um, so five years, pretty much. Um, and that we want to try and give her as much enjoyment with her family while she, she's still able to have that. Um, so get this message out there. Um, if you're in a position where you've got a few bob in your pocket and you, you've actually had a pretty decent year and a decent month, decent week, whatever, and you've got a few bob knocking around that you, you want to give a good home to, um, you are just giving link there. So, you know, I can point you in the direction of that. No donation is too small, but please give as generously as you can. Um, and as always, guys, we thank you very much indeed for your time on this matter. Yeah. It's um, I'm, I'm not going to add anything else to that because I'll, I'll end up not feeling great. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's one of them, mm. isn't it? Um, yep. Happy. I, I see your comment there, my darling. Um, catch up with us during the, during the new year for a beer. Please do listen. Um, we all know where we, we all know where I'm at now. In fact, um, I'm going to throw it up again because I can. Um, all right. Like, comment and subscribe. Get rid of that shit, Gatesy. Um, that one. That's, that's where I now am, this lovely place. I am over in Lewisham on the high road. There Look she at is. That. Um, we, we don't had a bit of work, road. didn't you, old son? Yeah, I did, yeah, needless to say. But we're, we're in a good place. We don't have those um, those dead hanging baskets out the front anymore. But um, that's where I am. Listen, any, any we, I am on the cusp of Millwall and Charlton territory. I'm on that crossroads. <clears throat> but any West Ham fan that's that's followed the channel since we've started, if anyone wants to come in, wants to come and say hello, I'll be quite happy to buy some people a beer. Um, come on down, let's have some fun. Um, let's let's you know talk about our, talk about the channel, talk about uh, you know our, our mutual love and respect of West Ham. And um, yeah. Life is precious. Stay safe, everyone. I'm Very much so. Those comments there. Gatesy, yep. um, do you want to say it or shall I? Fire away, my friend. We are fucking massive. Gatesy? Come on, you wines. Happy New Year. Onwards and upwards. And we're going to win the Europa League, aren't we? Come on. Let's hope so. <laughs>